You guys are obviously late on some payments. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you going? Get the truck out of here. Dude, you don't, you don't. Hey, hold on, hold on. How are you doing, boys? Guys, I'm just a simple man who finds joy in simple pleasures. I'm just as comfortable enjoying a croque monsieur on my balcony in Paris as I am on my private island, hunting shipwrecked sailors for sport, where I grant the sole survivor a lifetime of riches, ensuring that the whole thing is televised, of course. And guys, obviously I'm kidding. I rent the island. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not made of money. Now, obviously I'm joking, but if the success of shows like Squid Game and its subsequent reality show Disaster are indications of anything, it's that people love watching other people who are desperate for money try to claw their way out of poverty through silly little challenges. We don't need to address the issues that allow such pervasive wealth inequality to exist. We just need more content, but this isn't a new phenomenon. Let me take you back real quick to the year 2010. The period of massive economic downturn now known as the Great Recession is still in full swing and pre-recession GDP P won't fully recover for another year. People are defaulting on their debts and auto repossessions are higher than ever, with over 1.3 million cars being repossessed this year. People are struggling more than ever to pay their bills and keep their heads above water, and for many, it doesn't look like there's an end in sight. Now, it might come as a shock, but the average person would see this situation and not think of a single way to exploit the circumstances of the poor for entertainment. I know, it's stupid, right? But those guys over at Spike TV are cut from a different cloth. That's right, from the network that brought you Mansers. What can stop binge drinking brain damage? The way for a guy to keep boozing it up without his IQ going down is to smoke weed! Deadliest warrior. Hey! and 1,000 Ways to Die. Oh dang, look at that. It's the thumbnail for my 1,000 Ways to Die video, which you should really check out right after you watch this one, but but don't don't leave this video to go watch that one. Just watch it after. Comes Repo Games, a reality game show hosted by Josh Lewis and Tom Detone. That's right. This isn't just another version of South Beach Toe. You is not going nowhere. Get out of my way and I'm not playing. Play chicken all you want. Bernice don't back down. I don't care. I'm gonna back up and I'll do it. You ain't backing up. Which one is left? You ain't going nowhere. See, after Josh and Tom arrive and hook up the car, and when the vehicle owner inevitably comes running out of their house to stop these guys from taking their car, they discover that they have the chance to not only get their car back, but have the entire debt of the vehicle paid in full. Once the car gets hooked to the truck, the contestant has to answer trivia questions. Yes, you heard me right. There was never a better time to be behind on your car payment and have a wealth of trivial knowledge at your disposal than the year 2010. Call me Modest Mouse because I really missed the boat on that. Each contestant on the show gets five questions, but they only need to answer three correctly in order to get their vehicle back and get it paid off. Once they get three questions wrong though, that vehicle gets towed away. And sometimes the guys even get guns pulled on them, which happens with the literal first contestant we're going to see today. So on this first guy, they pull what Tom calls a repo bait and switch. Essentially, they need to repossess this guy's car, but he's been hiding it in a different location for a couple of days. So in order to lure him out, they hitch his wife's car to the back of their tow truck in an attempt to get him to come to the house. But uh, the plan works really well, and this shows up in a blind fury. And while Tom tries to calm him down, he goes into his house. He goes on to explain that he doesn't really like letting people go into their houses because they could come out with literally anything and boy is he right because not 10 seconds later this man comes out of his house holding a fucking gun to their faces Dude, you don't, you don't, hey hold on hold on hold on hold on i mean hey man say what you will about hosting jeopardy but I can't remember a time Alex Trebek had a gun pulled on it. And the crazy thing is that despite the fact that this man just held a gun in their faces, he's still allowed to play the game. But only after he hands the gun off to Junior to put it back in the case. And by case, he means the pillowcase that they keep it in to keep it warm. Tom, who is still absolutely reeling from the fact that he just was assaulted with a deadly weapon, still valiantly tries to break the ice by asking the couple a few questions about themselves. Uh, namely, where they met. How did you guys meet, by the way? Psychiatric hospital. Psychiatric hospital. Psychiatric hospital. Go figure. Yeah. They met in a psychiatric hospital. Look, man, I'm not one to say where you can and can't fall in love, but just me personally, I think that if I were in a psychiatric hospital, I would be trying to trying to work on myself. You know, I feel like like we're probably there for a reason, right? Sorry, let's keep going. Question number one: According to the song, who's the black private dick? Who's a sex machine to all the chicks? Shift. Shift or shift? Shift. Shift. 
That answer is... I think we got it. It's correct. <laughs> And, and right off the bat, they get the first one right. I wouldn't have gotten that. Until this video, I only had a very vague idea of who Shaft was, so. Question number two. Yep. Name four of the five original members of Guns N' Roses. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. If I were this guy, I would be real worried because I would have gotten these first two wrong immediately. I can name Axl Rose and Slash. I have no idea. Axl, Slash, Duff, and Mike. Axl is obviously correct. Slash. It's definitely correct. Duff is also correct. Mike. Mike. <laughs> Mike is incorrect. Okay, so he gets that one wrong. So we're in a little bit of trouble here, but we we st we still got some room. All right. Question three: How many dots are there in the Domino's Pizza logo? It's three, and I know I'm a pizza connoisseur. Five and a one. Nope, you're doing him dirty, Joanne. You don't know. That answer is incorrect. Uh, the correct answer is three. Okay, so I got my first one right, but Greg, he's not doing so hot. You know, I started feeling kind of bad for this guy because he has like his whole neighborhood out on his yard. Um, but then I remembered that he kind of drew the attention to himself because he pointed a gun in a guy's face. So, you know, kind of brought this on yourself, buddy. Casablanca is the largest city in what country? Spain or France? We're gonna say Spain. That answer is... Incorrect. I know it's Morocco because I looked the movie up a couple years ago and I had no idea where the fuck it was and it just stuck in my brain. But it's Morocco, final answer. The answer I was looking for is Morocco. Ah. Greg. If I were Greg's lifeline, he would have gotten his truck back. Never mind that this was filmed in 2010. I, I would have helped him. I would have done it. 11-year-old Isaiah might have been able to help here. But yeah, unfortunately, since Greg got three answers wrong, he doesn't get to keep his truck and it is repossessed. And he is understandably not super happy about it. Don't be bringing out any weapons and none of that crap. Get out my yard. So these next two contestants seem like like very nice ladies, and I'm sure that they have a lot of great qualities, but um, they, uh, they're they not very smart. Their names are Eileen and Ashley, and the car they're trying to win back is Eileen's 2006 Chevy Malibu. Tom asks them what they do for a living, and uh, it apparently is not something that they're allowed to say on camera because Eileen has to whisper it into his ear. And whatever it was, Tom reacts to it like a five-year-old who just got told he could get two toys in his McDonald's Happy Meal. In 2008, what athlete made a big splash winning eight gold medals in swimming events. Okay, so the questions get harder as you go further on. It, it's Michael Phelps, by the way. At least that's my answer. But keep in mind that this was filmed in like 2010. And for those of you who don't remember, Michael Phelps winning his medals and then the subsequent marijuana scandal that happened afterwards was such massive news that it seems impossible for people to not still be remembering this in like 2010. What athletes do you guys know? Hank. Oh yeah, she must be talking about Hank Hill, the former running back for Arlen High, who set the record for most yards rushed, a record that still remains unbroken. Okay, you pick the first name and I pick the last name. Andrew. Andrew Smith. There. That answer is... Correct? That'd be great. <laughs> it's incorrect. Yeah, because why did you think that picking the first name and then the last name was going to work? The correct answer is Michael Phelps. Yeah, yeah, that's... If someone says you have a nice pair of peepers, what part of your body are they referring to? Oh, sh You have got to be kidding me. You're kidding me, right? No. This oh, wait, you have a pair of eyes. Oh, no, First, maybe. maybe. Yes, oh. yes. No, no. <laughs> they had it. They were so close. They said eyes. That's the right answer, by the way. And because, because... I'm not trying to spoil it, but like who who doesn't know that? And they just let it slip through their finger. All right, so Ashley and Eileen have three questions left, and if they get even one of them wrong, they are going to lose Eileen's car. Let's see if they can pull through. They might surprise us. On a standard clock, when it's noon, the small hand is on what number? Wait, wait, what's noon? Noon? Is that Twelve, dumbass. Okay. Twelve. Did you see that? She had to look at her watch just to make sure. What African river is the longest river in the world? Nile River. Oh, okay. All right. You got the second right answer right off the bat here. So now Eileen and Ashley are two for two. They only need to get one more. I'm not going to lie. I'm rooting for them at this point. Like, we're, we're close. What is the fourth planet from the sun? I know the, the one with the little rings is Jupiter. 
All right, come on, Eileen and Ashley, you got this. Like, my very earnest mother, let's go, let's do this. Mars. Okay, Mars. It's correct! Ah! All right, let's go, dude. I just want to apologize, okay? I know I talked a lot of shit, but hey, Eileen and Ashley win. They get to drive off in the car and uh, Eileen flashes the camera before they drive away. So that's a happy ending for them as far as I'm concerned. All right, so our next contestant is Margaret who is behind on payments for her white minivan. I'm not behind in nothing. Josh just looks at the camera like, oh yes, she is. Now Margaret's understandably a little upset about everything. Hit my car Are you Margaret? Are you Margaret? I'm Margaret, but why y'all got my but once Josh tells her that she's on Repo Games, her tune changes quite a bit. Oh, that's lie. <laughs> oh, All the way lie. <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, my. Y'all ain't gonna show this to my church, right? <laughs> I like this lady. I, I hope she wins. Who went from being a gangster rapper to giving haircuts in the comedy barbershop? Let me see. Wow. Wow. Come on, Ooh, wow. Come on, right here. NWA with Easy E. Let me think of the song. Ah. I actually do not have a single answer for this. Purely based on her saying NWA, my guess would be Ice Cube because he's the only person from that group that I know for a fact did any acting after. But uh, the only thing I saw was the Are We There Yet movies. So, you know, I have no idea. Oh, Ice Cube! That answer is correct. Yeah! Okay, okay. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go, Margaret. Question number two. The star of David appears on the national flag of what country located in the Middle East? Hey guys, I really hate to break it to you, but that's kind of a that's kind of a really hot button these days. I'm gonna say Israel. That's what I'm going with. Correct! Yes! Look at her go, dude. She is she is banging these out. As long as she gets her next one right, she gets to keep her car, no questions asked. In the world of video games, Super Mario has a younger, skinnier, taller brother. What is his name? Oh, come on. Okay, she, she's got to have this in the bag, right? She has to. Oh, I play Super Mario. Woo, let me see. Okay. Yeah, all right. Mario, Luigi, then it was that little princess, and then it was that horn back looking creature you had to beat the hell out of. Come on, Mario, you got it. You know you know what this is. And I'm going with Luigi. Correct. <laughs> hell yeah, okay. That's nice, good for her. All right, so Margaret won her car and she gets to keep it. That's, that's awesome. That's really cool, like genuinely. So on the surface, the show isn't that bad in of itself, I suppose. I'm sure the contestants are edited to look a little bit dumber than they are in real life, but the trivia questions that they're given don't seem to be particularly difficult. So as long as you keep a clear head, you might be able to get your car back pretty easily. And yeah, it is pretty cool that the show is willing to pay off the vehicle for the people who win. But all that aside, the premise, the actual core of this show is still kind of gross. I mean, yes, these people agreed to pay a loan and they've defaulted on it. And when that happens, the company has the right to take their assets and try to recoup their loss. But turning this process into a game show just feels dystopian. You could argue the fact that when this show aired, vehicle repossessions were at an all time high and the entire country was struggling to make ends. And that aspect of it made this show pretty relatable to a lot of people. But it's not relatable in the way where it's about people commiserating with the struggles of other working class people and more about being like, oh shit, I'm so happy that that's not me. I mean, yeah, you could win your car that you're already supposed to be paying on, but you're also being exploited for your bad financial situation. And then having it broadcast to millions of people. Like just as an example, what if they did this to people who were renting out houses or apartments? Like you have a uniformed officer from the sheriff's office escorting you and your three kids out of your house while your landlord throws all your belongings into the yard. And then after each incorrect question, he gets to break something of yours. Like, all right, Becky, last question. If you get this one wrong, you guys have to pack up and leave, okay? What year was the Magna Carta sign? And she's like, oh God, uh, 1214? Sorry, Becky. It was actually 1215. Yeah, time to pack it up, you leech. Maybe next time read up more on 13th century or royal charter. Like I said, it's really cool that this show managed to help a lot of people. And that's undoubtedly a good thing. But the fact that we as a society have used and continue to use the poor for our entertainment sits funny in the pit of my Like when I smash an entire Little Caesars hot and ready and I forget to take a lactate tablet. If you guys like this, uh, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a video. I've been trying really hard to grow my audience very organically. Give this video a like, leave a comment letting me 
know what you thought or what other episodes of the show you want me to cover or any other topics you want me to cover. Share it with whoever you can, whoever you think might like it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. My name is Isaiah, and thank you so much for watching my video.